Hello, I'm Ederson Oliveira. I'll be presenting this video for dnnhero.com. In this video, I'll be talking about the ver version history feature in the HTML module. Now, here is a DNN 5.6.2, which is the most recent version on March 31st, 2011. So I'm going to log into the back end of this test site to explain uh, what is the version history feature in the HTML module? So let's let's log into the back end. And I'm going to log, to log in as super user. In the home page of our site, we have the default content of a brand new .NET Nook website, and we have uh, one, two, three uh, HTML modules added to this page. I'm going to show an example of what I'm talking about in the second HTML module here. So if I go to the action menu, and if I choose the option that says added content, I can scroll down and see the content here and make change to the content, let's say. Um, I'll make a small change here. This is a change. If I save this, actually when I save this, the change has been done. This is the, this is a change. And if I go back there again to edit content, if I scroll all the way down, it will say that this is version number two of this content in this module. And I will have some a couple options here. I can see a preview, and I can see the version history as well. So it under version history it says maximum number of versions that are allowed are five versions. And it shows the first one and the second one here, the second one that I have just created. I can click on, on preview. And in the preview area, it shows the content as it was before. See, the text has, it has not changed yet. The change that I have done is not here. So when I click to see the preview in the magnifier glass, the area at the top where it says preview, it gets refreshed and the content uh, related to that version will be will be displayed here. Now we do have a couple of options under the version history. We can delete a version, and you can see the garbage bin. You can preview a, a version, which you can do that by using the magnifier glass, and you can restore a version. Let's say that we no longer want this version; we want the previous one. So we can go to version number one. Click the restore button and the arrow in the middle. Now, as you can see, the, the version has uh, been restored and a third version was created as well. As you can see, now we have three versions. It states, it shows the version number, the date that the change was done, the user who did the change and the state which is published. Now, the professional version of .NET Nook has more features here. Uh, the community version has a few uh, features, but not as much as as many as the professional edition. Now, just to exemplify, I'm going to delete one of those versions. Now, version number two, I'm going to click the garbage bin. It's asking if I want to really delete that. I will confirm. And if I scroll down, I only have version one in version three now. Again, very, very useful feature. But a question that I, I come across from clients quite quite frequently is that what if I want to store more than five versions? Because if we keep changing the content, the number of versions will we start to grow. And because this setting is set to five, it will only store the latest five versions. It will not store more than that. But what if I want to store more? What can I do? Basically, there's no setting here, nor under the HTML module, nor on the site admin that will allow you to change this version number. Sorry, this number of versions from five to something else. In the .NET Look Professional Edition, there is a setting to change that easily, but not in the Community Edition. So, what can we do to increase the number of maximum versions uh, stored? Well, there's a way, it's just not uh, 
documented extensively, but there's a way to change that. Let's let's have a look at host SQL. This setting is stored in a table, and let's have a look at this table. By the way, the script that I'm going to use now will be published together with the video. So let's say that I will select all from a table called portal settings. So let's execute this. If we have a look, there are a couple of different settings and one of those settings is called maximum, his, maximum version history. And it's set to five. So what we can do is we can change that directly from the database, from the table. And I do have a little script that, I, that we can run to change that. Very simple, the script. But again, you have to know what you're doing here to avoid making a mistake and changing settings that you should not be changing. So the, the query is quite simple. It's an update to update uh, to portal settings table. And we are changing the setting value. It is five right now. And I'm changed to 10 where the setting name, the setting column here is called maximum version history, which is this name. So let's run this. And I'm going to just hit back, select again. And now we can you can see that the maximum version history was set to 10. So if we go to home page, go back to our module, go to settings, scroll all the way down. Sorry, not settings, but go to the content, edit content, scroll all the way down and click version history, it still shows five. Why is that? It's because this, this value most likely is cached. So we need to do what I, what I, what I call kick. We need to kick the website. So it, it cleans its cache and it, it, uh, it reads the database information again. To do that, very simple. Go to host, host settings and click at the very button where it says restart application. Like by clicking that, the site will be restarted. And now if we go back to the home page, if we go to the content of our module again, we should have that number changed there. So if we expand version history, now as you can see, we have 10 here. So this is just a quick video showing how you can utilize the version history feature of .NET Nook and how can you change the maximum number of versions that can be stored. Okay, thank you very much and bye for now.